Allora, abbiamo parlato di un gruppo di lavoro e quindi a noi cosa stava a fare come gruppo Vason? La competenza no. della selezione delle materie prime? My topic will be the importance uh, of uh, competence and expertise in the selection of uh, uh, the adjuvants for separation. This is a team effort. This has been a team effort where everybody contributed to their competence uh, to serve a final objective. It's proved, therefore, very important uh, to cooperate with multinational corporations and uh, centers of excellence, uh, which has always been part of our DNA. Um, and uh, we're going to share our results with you, the results of this joint effort with you. In this slide, obviously, we're referring to gelatin, and the selection here is made using a single parameter, which is uh, essential in this type of mechanisms, which is uh, the um, surface electric charge, electrical charge. Now, this uh, charge correlates with the substances that are present in musts and wines that we use. And uh, that is very important in adjuvants. Now, colloidal substances used as adjuvants are very important because they favor the limpidity in the wine, uh, the separation processes, uh, uh, clarification, fining, dynamic separation and uh, they have an impact on tartaric uh, settling and precipitation and uh, color stabilization. And they also perform aromatic adsorption. So in our everyday work, uh, colloidals and, uh, and colloidal-like substances are particularly relevant. Just to give you a rough idea of uh, what we're talking about, this is uh, an incomplete list uh, of uh, substances um, and they're divided as to whether they are negatively or positively charged uh, and uh, based on whether they are hydrophilic or hydrophobic. In, uh, and so, uh, the way they respond to a hydroalcoholic environment such as must uh, and wine. Uh, but this also, um, this list also should include uh, other sorts of gelatins, bentonites, and colloidal macromolecules, and all cells uh, that have this kind of uh, behavior. So basically, the colloidal state is uh, where you have uh, substances dispersed in a medium characterized by interactions with the medium itself. Um, and these interactions are not uh, bonds or chemical interactions. Uh, but these are um, dictated by surface behavior such as Brownian motion, van der Waals forces, and electrical charges, of which the Brownian motion is the most important. And uh, we also see thermal reactions, which become important in extensive cellaring. Brownian motion in long uh, cellared wines uh, tend to diminish while you see an emergence of uh, van der Waals forces and electrical charges. So let's now think of uh, the electrical uh, qualities, uh, um, surface electricity uh, behavior that uh, this uh, can lead uh, to. Now, when we deal with molecules, we know well that complex molecules uh, may have points within its structure where charges are particularly, uh, will particularly accumulate. We can have polar or nonpolar molecules. In a case like this, uh, you tend to simplify things, and therefore, what uh, 
is uh, uh, believed to be the uh, most uh, predictive model is the double layer model, which is represented in the picture. Now, actually, it is thought that the uh, particle is uh, spherical, and that is done just to simplify uh, the computation. And two surfaces are identified, undatified, one which is innermost, the so-called stationary layer, and uh, the uh, outer layer, which is the diffuse layer. Now, in the inner layer, there are univocal uh, charges which are contrary to the charges present on the particle surface, on the molecule surface. While where you reach the diffuse layer or outer layer, you start seeing charges uh, um, of both kinds, and that's where you start seeing the interactions. In the past 20 years, we've had uh, this piece of equipment in our labs, uh, a streaming potential uh, machine uh, combined with a titration device uh, that uh, studies uh, the characteristics uh, of adjuvants. It's a pleasure to mention Roberto Ferrarini's work. He was uh, our research and development department for many years at Perfect Wine. Uh, and uh, he was also the person who cooperated uh, with uh, uh, Dr. Celotti, who is present here, and who was the um, coordinator of the you know, Forum Scientific Committee. So, since 1995, they've been able to study this subject in an in-depth fashion. Now, these studies have made it possible for us to, um, first of all, to find that there are must and wines that are negatively charged, which was in itself a great achievement. Now, but if in a negative medium we add a positive charge, that will create uh, some form of attraction. So we can imagine that there are charges of a contrary nature, of an opposite nature, which will cause the uh, creation of uh, flocculated materials that can be transferred uh, through decanters and other separation mechanisms, uh, uh, causing a separation and a loss of durability. Now, what kind of information will that provide to us? Uh, here we have quality controls uh, that were um, implemented in terms of a juvenile selection. Here at the top you see uh, bentonites. These are uh, silica salts and these are gelatins. So, so it's important to identify the parameters, not just from a regulatory perspective, but also these technical perspectives, which, uh, these technical parameters, which are very important uh, in uh, um, providing real life results and a grasp on what is really happening in the medium. Now, allow me to say that uh, pretty often we are in doubt as to the effectiveness of uh, composite uh, uh, productions containing carbon, gelatins, and other elements. But if we study the interactions also from this perspective, we can provide answers uh, in terms of what really happens when flocculation takes place and compaction takes place, which is an important element to understand when it comes to choosing um, when it comes to choosing the uh, adjuvants uh, to use uh, on a daily basis in our wineries. Now, products uh, that pass that test uh, um, are branded like this. Uh, this is the label that we use for it. Uh, we have plant proteins and chitosans. In this case, we're also referring to gelatins, which is very powerful as a clarification agent that can provide effective separation also at low doses with the uh, fewer sediments, fine sediments, uh, 
and it's therefore suitable to separation, continuous separation mechanisms such as those at work in decanters, which is a dynamic separator. Now, knowing the electric charge uh, means uh, translates into guaranteeing uh, efficacy for a juvenile. Once you know the vintage and the cultivar, uh, the behavior of the adjuvant will be, will be um, constant and predictable over time, and that is a guarantee of effectiveness. That translates uh, into more efficiency and performance in separation processes. And this is a product which is already in use uh, in the largest wineries we work with. Wherever separation velocity is important, electric charges become important. And so, wherever velocity is essential is uh, of the essence, it is important to define uh, such electric charges very precisely. And this also makes it possible to maximize uh, the performance of the latest applications, uh, starting clarification on the must, uh, skipping the pressing and clarification steps uh, through a decanter, going from mechanical uh, crushing to the buffer tank, uh, to the decanter, producing a mustard that is ready for fermentation, saving uh, um, energy. And I think that uh, wineries that are looking at uh, changing their equipment uh, should uh, save money um, buying, uh, considering uh, and evaluating these new materials, which are very effective and will probably bring them savings uh, uh, from many points of view. I'd like uh, to thank uh, you all for listening so attentively. I'd like uh, to thank all the attendees, and particularly I would like to thank Roberto Ferrarini, who's guided us uh, through all of these experiments and has left us with an enormous legacy of literature and data. and uh, all the help he's provided uh, through the Perfect Wine project. Uh, thank you.